Good morning, everyone. Today, let's go through just a couple bits out of Peter's first letter that we have collected up in the scriptures. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those temporarily residing abroad who are chosen. This is one of the reasons why I like these little software packages that can show you a few translations at the same time to compare. Because the, I use four of them, and I like reading all four sometimes, because then I really get the point. I like this um, one here at the bottom. I, Peter, whom Jesus Christ made an apostle, am writing this letter to you who believe in him, you who God has chosen to belong to himself, I am writing to you who live in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, far away from your true home in heaven. Right? So, that's pretty cool. If you want to get fancy, we're called elect sojourners. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Peter, that rascal, the one that had a hard time learning from Jesus, but he did eventually learn very well. He took what Jesus taught him to heart. And I like what he, he writes to these people. God our Father chose you as he himself decided previously, and his spirit has set you apart in order that you may obey Jesus Christ and in order that his blood may make you acceptable to God. May God act very kindly to you, and may he make you live more and more peacefully. I wish our leaders would adopt this attitude. May God act very kindly to you, and may he make you live more and more peacefully. Right? Multiplied peace. Multiplied. The word multiplied to increase. Abound. A great number. Multitude. Fullness. A bundle. To fill. To be filled. Isn't that nice? I think that's nice. And peace. What kind of peace? A state of national tranquility. Exemption from the rage and havoc of war. Peace between individuals. Harmony. Concord. Safety. Felicity. Wouldn't that be nice? To join together. Wow! To have rest. Wow! Wouldn't that be nice? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about Jesus and what he did for us and how because of what he did we are allowed to have good things in full measure so once you accept Christ then his rules and regulations apply his authority applies and he Christ Jesus has already trounced all devils. He's already sentenced Lucifer to be bound up for a thousand years when Jesus comes back to rule from Jerusalem for a thousand years. And then after Lucifer gets to have one more free-for-all on earth, after that, then he gets put in the lake of fire for the rest of eternity. And we never, ever, ever have to bother with that boy again which is awesome. But that's all very far off. How far off? I'm tired of speculating. <laughs> Aren't you tired of speculating? Let's carpe diem. Let's YOLO. <laughs> and that is right now for practically 2,000 full years, an apostle of Christ, one who walked with him, lived with him, had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with him, went fishing with him. He says, May he make you live more and more peacefully. May grace and peace be yours in full measure. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Wow! 
let's accept that as reality, our reality. Because I really like that idea of a state of national tranquility right now. Hello? You know exactly what I'm referencing. Yes, you do. <laughs> can we agree on something? Wherever two or three agree under the name of Christ, it can be done, it shall be done, it will be done. Get as deep in that as you want. Let's all sit here and say, you know, Peter was a very interesting guy. And if he could wrap his head around all this and accept it, I can too. Let's get to know Peter some more. I recommend you study about him. There are online references. Just Google the guy. Google him. You'll find all kinds of things about him. If he could say he wishes for us, people he never met, a state of national tranquility, what a guy. Let's decide to agree with him that yes, I, me, you, we want a state of national tranquility. Under the blessings of the Messiah, it can be done before he shows up to rule from Jerusalem. Yes, before he shows up to rule from Jerusalem. Now, some of you are going to debate, well, the Great Tribulation's coming. What are you talking about being able to accomplish a state of national tranquility? <sighs> we don't have to be blown up in all of that. We really don't have to be. And then some of you are going to argue, yeah, but I think that the USA is in the Bible, and we are that mystery whore of Babylon. So we're going to get blown up in one hour. If that is the case, that doesn't mean on our way to that moment, we have to have turmoil. Maybe we get blown up because we can learn to be tranquil and be at peace with ourselves. Have the peace that passes all understanding, surpasses all understanding. Be a Christian nation in that capacity. And then the Antichrist burgeoning gets so angry that they nuke us because of that. Oh, hey, why not? I know the Bible says we get punished or whomever that place is gets punished because of the iniquities they have foisted on the rest of the world. America has done that generation after generation. I get that. But that doesn't mean leading up to the end it has to stay wicked. Why do you think it has to stay wicked? May grace and peace be yours in full measure. <sighs> Hosanna Shalom. Thanks, guys. Catch you next time. Like, subscribe, and share.